While speaking at a campaign event in Michigan yesterday, J.D. Vance was asked simply what makes him happy. But instead of giving a real answer, he used the moment to criticize Vice President Harris. You've been criticized as being a little too serious, maybe angry sometimes. What makes you smile? What makes you happy? Well, I, I smile at a lot of things, including bogus questions from the media, man. <laughs> I mean, look, I think if you watch if you watch a full speech that I give, I actually uh, I'm having a good time out here and I'm enjoying this. But look, uh, sometimes you got to take the good with the bad. And right now I am angry about what Kamala Harris has done to this country and done to the American southern border. And I think that most people in our country, they can be happy-go-lucky sometimes, they can enjoy things sometimes, and they can turn on the news and recognize that what's going on in this country is a disgrace. Joining us now, MSNBC political analyst Brendan Buck. He was communication strategist and former aide to House Speakers Ryan and Boehner. Brandon, good to see you. I mean, that's a layup. Yeah. And he missed it the rim. Yeah, look, I, I worked for Paul Ryan uh, when he was the VP nominee, and I know that there's a lot of pressure and intensity, especially in the very beginning, and clearly he is off to a rough start. But that was as easy as it gets, and all these people are really looking for from, from him in a, in a situation like that, and sort of generally is, are you a normal person? Uh, are you likable? Like, we, we can talk about issues all day, but if people just don't like you as a person, they're never going to connect with you. They're never going to listen to what you have to say. And the fact that he couldn't answer a simple question like that, he got asked also yesterday uh, why someone would want to have a beer with him. And he did the same sort of awkward laughing thing and eventually said, well, because I like to have beer. It, 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 it fails to connect with actual real people. What makes you happy? The answer is spending time with my family, going to a ball game. You don't need to... Uh, but it seems like, it, you know, he also had this 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 stunt on the tarmac yesterday we mentioned earlier where he tried to chase Vice President Harris. It kind of came across as bullying. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, as you say, it has been a, a, a shaky rollout. How does he course correct? Yeah, they're clearly in his head at this point. He doesn't really seem to know what he wants to do or what he wants to say, what image he wants wants to present. I, I don't mind trying to sort of go after the other side at all. Um, I think he needs to get back to, to really, really basics. What is what is your job? Your job is to is to appeal to the American people to talk about why Donald Trump is a better choice than than uh, and he than um, the Kamala Harris. He seems so convinced on trying to convince people that that he is good, that that they should like him, and he can't figure out how to do that. Uh, I think he needs to, to you know, pare it back a little bit and, and, and train a little bit more focus uh, on his job. One thing he is doing is acting as a, an attack dog, which often is the running mate role. He's going after now Governor Walls, um, talking about it, military record, his handling of the George Floyd press. George Floyd protests. Do you think these GOP talking points are going to be effective? Uh, I think this is actually a real issue. I, I think this is something that the, the Harris campaign is going to have to take take pretty seriously. There's there's a very good, uh, deeply reported story in the Washington Post this morning um, about the decision that Tim Walls made to leave uh, the the reserves, uh, and it, it does appear that he did know that he was going to be deployed right before he decided to leave. Um, whether or not that he had a good reason to do that, I think that the ads for something like that sort of write themselves and, and can be pretty devastating. Um, some Somebody who did serve 24 years and did go to school in the GI Bill, but when had to be asked to go to, to serve or was expected to be asked to serve, didn't. Uh, wh whether or not you have good reason, I don't know. I think that is a real political issue. And we know that uh, the Trump campaign and, and Chris Lasavita is very familiar with running swift boat ads uh, against John Kerry. So uh, I would keep a very close eye on that. And they don't seem to have a very good answer for, for yeah, that. To be, to be clear, he did serve more than two decades. But you're, it, it does seem it was picking up some traction on the right. We will see how the Harris campaign responds today. Uh, lastly, though, the, the race has clearly changed. Further evidence, the Cook political report, which we... Uh, uh, assesses the state of the play, and it just in the last few minutes made three changes. Arizona, Nevada, Georgia, all they had previously categorized as leaning Republican, now all three toss-ups. Yeah, and that, the, the map has completely changed. I mean, before Joe Biden's only path to winning was winning those blue wall states, and, and there was really no hope to do anything else. Now he could, she could potentially lose a Michigan. She could potentially lose a Wisconsin and still pick up enough seats el states elsewhere to win. It, it completely changes the dynamic. And now they have the resources to be able to play in a lot of those states. The amount of money they're raising, they're not only going to be able to go into Arizona, Nevada, Georgia. They might be able to go into North Carolina and try to put some more places on, uh, where, de where uh, Republicans need to be on defense. Um, it's, it's a very different election now. She'll be Michigan today and then heads out west to those battlegrounds. MSNBC political analyst Brandon Buck, thank you for joining us this morning.